What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of The Dumbest Timeline. This week, we are are here, and we are just... This one's going to be probably pretty hectic. We have an awesome guest with us. Juliet Danger is to my left, your right, somewhere on the screen. I don't know how you're watching this. Maybe you're turning... You're rot- she's here, and she's awesome, and I'm really excited to speak to her. Juliet, what's our subject today? All right. So the subject today is U.S politics specifically do you want to do you want to introduce the specific part of it u.s politics u.s politics overall which i think uh, in of itself is always going to be interesting and to all the the americans out there who are going to watch this uh and wondering why canadians are speaking about it i would just like to point out that juliet would you like to explain why you know about this because they're probably going to wonder oh yeah so i'm an american and I'm going to come out as that one time. I know. It's like, honestly, I have to come out as an American more than I have to come out as gay these days. Like, it's really messed up. Um, <laughs> but I am American. I've been here in Montreal for, what, like 12, 13 years? I feel like I keep saying 12 years, but it's actually like 13 now. <laughs> Wait, have I known you that? Like, Because when you started doing... So Juliet used to be a volunteer, an amazing volunteer at the ration that I used to work at. Was that you had just gotten to Montreal recently when you were doing that? Yeah, when I started radio, I think it was like one year after I arrived. So yeah. It's oh my been a god. Lot. So I've known you I've known you for like 13 years now. You've known me for a Aww. long time. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. so cool. That is cool. Uh yeah, okay. And with that said, yes, we, we I know you used to always go back for Thanksgiving and stuff. You used to visit your family often and and you've recently been going to the States often as well. And the elections have been going on the energy in the states is always very interesting to me i i'm not going to pretend like i i'm not american so it is very much outsider looking in watching the mm-hmm. situation and instead of just giving it this kind of overall it's kind of crazy over there i definitely feel like there are very specific approaches from either side mm-hmm. you have the republican side or as the, the GOP grand old party, as I'm told, that does things like they'll convince people that the voting machines and specifically the story that I just shared, the voting machines can't be trusted. Mm. So then what happens in that situation, and I'll bring it back, back up in Arizona, a county is refusing to certify an election for and that could cost the GOP a seat in the House. The funny part is the only reason they don't want to certify it is because, as I understand, they don't believe the election results are accurate because the same Republicans have convinced them that the electoral system and the voting machines are corrupt and are being misused. And thus, nothing that comes from the results using these machines should be trusted, even 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 when it's their own victory. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't make doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But I mean, <laughs> the problem, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I think the problem with the whole like since the Trump presidency is that it's tested the waters of like everything went out the window, like decorum, like political party, like bipartisanship. Like these people used to sit down in the Senate and eat lunch together. Like even though they'd be battling right. it out and they go and eat lunch, the Trump that you know trump was at and the clintons were friends like they went to each other's kids right. weddings and stuff like they were trump was a democrat and so like you know the the lines were divided so hard that now they really hate each other now like people are getting like attacked it's crazy but they're they're like going they're yeah, just nancy, doing anything. nancy, oh, nancy pelosi's pelosi. husband got attacked right at, yeah at and i don't know pelosi. like i can't you know i'm not gonna be like oh this was like a, a gop motivated thing no, but, no, you know, no, 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 no. No, but yeah. for sure like but for sure i'm just saying like shit's going crazy and um, I think like they just have to dismiss anything that the other person does. Like it's become, it's become like insanity. So like I'm, my mother's in Florida and, and you know, we're all kind of originally from New York. Right. So like we've yeah. gone from this very liberal state to this very like insane state. And I've lived in like, 12 <laughs> different, I've lived in like 12 different states. I lived all over the United States, I lived in Idaho. I lived in oh, Canada. Cool. Yeah. I lived all over the place and yeah, people are just when I was young, a Republican, like what a Republican was, was a much different thing than what a Republican is now. Mm. And the same with liberal, and the same with Democrats. Democrats were a shit ton more conservative. Like they were the ones that were signing right. into like all these like gay marriage 
anti-gay marriage yeah, laws and things. Like, yeah. When I was a kid, that's all I heard just growing up. Like all I heard was just the anti-gay debate. They like stopped on abortion for a bit. They chilled. <laughs> they brought that back right. up now. Right. But like the same, the same shit and the same stuff over and over. And then the, you know, the World Trade Center, we're in Iraq. We were like distracted for a while. But like right. it's become now the oh. differences between these people are insane. So like they were, yeah, they're just gonna like stall any anything, even if it's in their own best interest, because they believe in like these, they believe in these like fanatical things and then jump on them, right? Like it's weird. I, it's like we haven't gotten smarter. I feel like you tapped on something super interesting that uh probably a lot of people may have noticed. I didn't really think about it at the time, but the 9-11 as unfortunate as it was was kind of a weird unifying moment in the country because all the things that you all the things that were building up with regards to their disagreements and the politics got pushed to the side when it there was a like a one enemy and that mm -hmm. enemy was on the other side of the world and you could all unify and saying you have to stop that enemy first before you can even address the other stuff yeah. And then for it to for for the the people who performed 9-11 to be stopped under a different president also was kind of this weird unifying. I'm not saying the name because I don't like saying that person's name because fuck that person they can burn in hell. But <laughs> just the uh just unifying the 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 uh, the the energy of like Barack Obama got to say like we got him and, no, and I know <laughs> yeah so George 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 got to say we're going after him and Barack got yeah. to say we got him and that's kind of this the the bookends of that inter of that situation is uh, a, a GOP and a and the liberal not meaning to work together but they inadvertently work together to try and bring justice for the American yeah. people in that but situation. even like even like look at Dick Cheney, like, you know, his daughter was gay and he voted like obviously against gay marriage, but he was like, mm -hmm. I'm okay with, I don't know if he said this exactly, but he was okay with like domestic partnerships with all these things mm -hmm. that were pretty liberal. Like, I swear, the, like, if you look at the difference between what we thought George Bush was the worst freaking president, like at the time, I remember growing up, like after all the shit, after 9-11 had passed and then we like, we've had enough time to sit and think. And he kind of used that to be like, you know, shoehorning a war in Iraq, which was like a whole different animal oh, yeah. because it wasn't even about that. And right. um, and it became the war on terror, blah, 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 blah. It was like, you know, like every other war that starts, you have to hit, it has, something has to hit home for us to be like, yes, we need to drive enough public support for it. Like, you know, the same Pearl Harbor, all this stuff. I'm not saying it's staged or anything. I'm just saying like those no, events do help, <laughs> they help launch for the pro-war, the war hawks that want to go right. after them. Right. And it's, uh, you know, they maybe they, they don't maybe uh, try so hard to make it not a disaster, but like, like they, I, I think like what would a Republican look like then? And like, you look at the Republican party now, that's just gone bad shit. But the same with the, the same with the liberals, they've gone, they've gone like a bit more insane to the left too, in like some very obnoxious right. way. They just refuse. And there's like this lack of bipartisanship. Like if someone Democrat does something bad, they're hundred percent going to just double down on this person until the last yeah. minute it doesn't matter what it is republicans do the same but it's like we expect that from them <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah it's it, the liberal the liberals tossing their own under the bus thing is something that i didn't i still don't really understand when i see the reaction to finding out like uh i think who who is it the Canadian al franken who got accused of inappropriate actions yeah. and got pushed out by his own party and then got cleared was he cleared or was he just not like charged like you know what i mean like it probably i doubt right. he, he was like oh actually that didn't happen and i doubt they could really prove i mean again un like unfortunately oh, whether okay. it's true or not whether it's true or not to, oh what did you find someone no in, in the last the last thing is in february 2022 this year, in an interview with the Washington Post, he said he regretted resigning from the Senate and might run for public office again. Yeah, I'm trying I mean, to he'll come back. He'll come back yeah. more conservative, though. I bet. But after that experience, but I mean, either way, it's unfortunately whether it's true or not, it's in politics and celebrity. Right. It, it all takes as one even whisper of a scandal. Like it happens all the time. Right. We don't really wait anymore. We just immediately hit like the, the you know eject button on people because we just are pretty reactive these days and social media has made it like we want to get ahead of everything, right? But yeah, all it takes is like a tweet from Kim Kardashian like Balenciaga. I don't know. I'm reconsidering <laughs> things. But that was weird. That was a weird thing that happened too. That was a weird yeah. timeline. Yeah. What was that? Yes. About? 
Who did that? Can, can I want to know. We're looking into the parties, like, bro. I'm working marketing. I know you know who made this. I know that you yeah, had like okay. ten people involved. I know that they someone was dealing with the papers. Someone was dealing with the, the teddy bears. Who? You yes, know who it is. Yes. Yes. Who and the fact that they're that? the fact that they're trying to sue the people that did that worked on the piece. So the photographer who worked on the first original thing was just like, Hey man, I'm just a photographer. They told me to shoot in my signature style. I just shot my signature style. It's just like, yeah, but you were shooting kids holding teddy bears in, in, in like Dom outfits. Didn't you think that was weird? It's just like, Hey man, I'm just a photographer. It's like, but aren't photographers considered artists? Like, did you not? Anyways. And then you had the other people who did like the window dressing thing and some other thing. And that caused a whole bunch of issues. And then Balenciaga. The there was the, the, there was two people that did a scene that they're that Balenciaga is now going after because they're saying much like you were saying, they were saying like, Oh, well, we didn't know that they, they were going to do that. And we believe they did that with malicious, malicious intent. And like you were saying, no, you guys are telling me you didn't know who was working on your project. At but some like point they, there's so much approval. Like, okay, so yeah. the, a, something like a Balenciaga ad campaign would go through. I can't even tell you how many levels of approval. I just just to get a fucking like a Instagram post out. You should see what marketing right. people have to go through. Typically, I'm lucky. I have a very small team, and meaning it's me. But like, like seriously, I have even to get some approvals. It's just a nightmare. So, like. There's just so many moving parts. And I think a company that is big as Balenciaga definitely has a huge team. And like I've had even partners who worked in fashion and stuff too. I've had partners who worked in like in like some in big campaigns on other things, like for, right. for, for like huge things that you have to like construct ship. And yeah, I'm telling you, there's no way these people didn't know for not just to, like didn't they know, they knew it for months. They had to plan it. This was like last quarter they planned this. Right. Everything <laughs> Everything is planned so far in advance yeah, for this for sure. stuff that you know someone somewhere new. Uh, but th that that tangent, we you know we had to go on Sorry. tangents. There's, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of other things going on that are part of the dumbest timeline. Like I'm I'm sure if we if we brought up his name, he who shall not be named, the 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 college dropout himself. Uh, if we brought him up, that would turn into to to Kim's ex, like all the things okay, that he is. That. If we brought him up, that would turn into a whole other hour-long conversation. Like, well, you know, technically it is part of it because that person is running. Oh, president. true. Okay, so I guess we can talk yeah. about the the dumbest timeline uh, and running in politics. And the I, so one of the things I do find it interesting about American politics, and you're actually right. There, the part like we keep saying the left and and the the right or the GOP and the liberals or the Republicans and the Democrats. The mm. system itself is predicated on pretty much just two parties even though the two parties themselves aren't two parties they're technically three parties where you have the democratic uh, centralists the republican centralists and then you have the the progressives on the far left and then you have the conservatives and what people used to refer to as a tea party people on the far oh, wow. right and I, 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 to me, yeah. at least again, from the outside looking in the way the American political system is set up is you have the centralist and then you have the two outskirt like parties. And that's actually what forms your three system party where most people are always voting for like teetering on voting for a little yeah. bit more centralist Democrats, a little bit more centralist Republican. Um, exactly. Like if you vote for, if you typically, if there's a third, a really strong third party, like let's say like Nader or something. I mean, right. that was a little bit weird. People, a lot of liberals voted for him too, right. which like, again, they lost the election for the Democrats. So people will be like, don't freaking vote for a third party if you're liberal because yeah. you're just, well, either way, you're just going to take it from the party. It's like, it's like, just go pick a side. And everybody is always like, you're centrist, you're a piece of shit. But it's like, really, we should hope that more people would just stick to the middle where most people exist. Like, yeah. I mean, again, most people haven't, most people haven't like moved around as much. Most people haven't seen as much of, like their country, their own countries as like, as I think I've been, I've been honored to do, even though I yeah. a nightmare as a like growing up <laughs> moving, moving every two years was a nightmare, fair, but fair. I got to see a lot of shit. And like, you just realize that most people are in the middle ground and you'd be surprised. Like in Pennsylvania, I met a lot of people who were extremely not liberal people, but would vote, would vote liberal every time because they were part of unions and they were oh, like the most racist homophobic people you will ever meet. And they were voting for Obama twice, swear to God, because oh, they're unions. They're, they have, they're union workers and Republicans don't like unions, but Trump has transcended those lines, which is incredible. So he's gotten these people 
who who literally don't will not be helped by voting for the Republican right. Party. Maybe they will not. Maybe people won't get abortions and gays won't have like you know rights and maybe whatever the hell they'll feel better about things. But like their their lives will be impacted. They're gonna have. They're not like these tax cuts would only affect the richer people. So right. They're like, oh my god, I make forty thousand dollars. They're gonna come get my money. It's like absolutely not. <laughs> and like it's just you're never gonna have to worry about that. How did he? But how do you, what do you think was happening in the States at that time that, I, I mean, I, being black, one of the perspectives that I see so often, because again, I, I'm not in the States, but so many of the American friends that I have in like many nerd groups and stuff yeah. like that, whenever I see them talking about, a lot of them say the the Trump was a reaction to the fact that there was a black president. I can't imagine that's the only reason that Trump got in, though. There has to. I mean, be there's more. also like there. It's like Obama. Like, di- like I don't think. Oh, it's not. It's not. Again, it's no. It's never a president's fault or whatever. But like, the country was starting to. You know, it, we we went through a recession in 2009. Like we've right. had through a lot of stuff. So like people like to blame the economy. The economy wasn't great. I think the thing about Obama was like Obama had to leave, right? Like he had to leave office. So you can say it was a reaction to a black president. Someone had to fill his seat. He was there the yeah. two terms he was allowed. So we had, but then they chose, they also chose Hillary freaking Clinton, which yeah. nobody likes. We don't like, people also are sick of dynasties. If we've heard the name before as a president, we don't want you to come Interesting. back. Like Interesting. it's really right. a thing. I mean, unless you, you know, honestly, unless, unless it become, unless you're like, a diehard Republican or Democrat, then you'll be like, yes, more dynasties. Let's have the yeah. Kennedys run. Let's have the Bushes run. But for me, I feel like if we've are out of the 300 and like 18 million people we have, if I hear another freaking name that I've already heard, there's something going on with this process that is right. weird. Yeah. This isn't a career path that you can like give on to your children. I don't care what anyone says. Go to law school or economics and then run for office. Like not because you have a billionaire ex-president dad salary. Yeah, yeah. Like, so uh, that people were sick of that. Clinton is also just super unlikable. And we all saw from the the email hack, which they tried to like, again, distract and say, oh my God, let's all freak out about Russia, which we should. We were also like, can we talk about what we found in the hack? Which mm. was that you like basically rigged the, ele- the DNC election against Bernie Sanders. Yeah. We probably could have maybe won. I don't know. I don't know. Do you think America would be ready for a progressive president? I think that they've already like that. It's like depends if they're running for Democrats. Yeah, I think that they're ready for a Democratic president. It just depends on who they pick. I don't think Biden running again makes any goddamn sense. Like seriously, no. I, I I'm obvi- I would literally vote for a dead person over Trump. But I'm just saying that Biden is not too far away from that. And like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mentally, that's- yeah, that's I mean, we problems. need a leader right now. Like, we need a leader who can who can make sense of things. Who can't just who isn't just like holding on for dear life and trying to get through, stumble through speeches and stuff to make sure we're all like, is he good? Like, I want someone who can like lead and have strategy, and yeah, who has a good who has a good group of people around them. Like, we have like Russia, we have North Korea, we have all this stuff going down. Yeah. We've got, coming out of a global pandemic, we're going into a recession. We need some but like we can't have. We can't have a Republican. If Trump is right now, we're going to get World War III. He's so reactive. He's going to be like, I told Kim, you know, if he, if he doesn't step back, we're going to push the nukes. And he's going to do it. He's going to, like, push the red button. Yeah, he's the type of person that doesn't really back down. He likes to challenge bullies. And, I, I mean, yeah. I understand that approach because I feel like America – starts off its whole run off the idea of like there was a king and you were just like you can't bully us we're our own nation (laughs) and i get that i just don't know that in this day and age that's the safest thing because when you were standing up to the pres to the king of england back then it was a guy who was far away in a bunch of boats and a bunch of other people that would take forever to get to you now (laughs) it's a guy with nuclear like nuclear codes and nuclear bombs who will launch that shit and it's just like yes everyone's just like well you know the likelihood of someone actually doing that is slim to none because we know it would there'd be a fallout where everyone starts firing nukes but then you also have to wonder like some people don't care like you know michael kane's character said in batman some people like watching the world burn and you got to be careful with who like like you were saying dynasty approach where the 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 kim jong un kim jong il like that's just a dynasty approach where it's just like you just keep passing down it's a dictatorship it's a succession it's a bloodline succession like dictatorship if we do if we have one more goddamn kennedy run for any office i swear <laughs> I mean, someone every election someone says what about this kennedy i'm like can who kennedy yeah how many of them are there like stop and, this and the, the crazy part about the kennedys is the, the 
their whole empire was isn't it referred to Camelot and that like basing it off the idea of Arth Arthurian like why all I know is they were a bunch of freaking Irish white trash bootleggers who <laughs> somehow freaking yeah. like drank well, people took everyone's money into a but you know so were my folks you know so were my <laughs> Irish side of my people we had a speakeasy in Staten Island you can still go there there's like a little hidden floor and oh, cool. and there's three floors but you wouldn't know it so that was like where the bottles went so all the Irish you know they wouldn't give us jobs so they they had to be you know yeah, they had to your... sell alcohol. But anyway, they're a bunch of bootlegging jerks. Like, why do they deserve to be president? Yeah, yeah. Anyone <laughs> I do. I just didn't. Our, our people obviously weren't very savvy with the business of you selling wanna... alcohol. We were better at drinking it. Do you want to run in politics? Have you ever thought about politics yourself? Like, uh, I. Oh, man. I just think that they'd cancel me so quickly. It depends if if they if people could like me in a liberal way, the way that they like Trump, like completely forgivingly, like, oh, this person did drugs, oh, this person did this. Like, yes, yes, all those things. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on with my Twitter. I definitely don't think <laughs> I've been like racist or anything like crazy like that. I haven't I, I've been an adult the whole time on there. So I like that you're me. just like, I have no idea what's going on with my Twitter. Like for you're, sure you're it would just distancing yourself from it and <laughs> I probably made fun of so many politicians throughout my life. Right, Twitter right. That, like, I have burned a lot of bridges I don't even know about. Like, I'd have to go through my tweets. Like, I'm not saying I'd be canceled for something no, like that. No. But something, maybe. Who yeah. knows? But I would be a pundit for sure. That would be fun. Okay. I could be a pundit, but like, yeah. Like, Do, yeah. That would be fun. Uh, and then uh, we didn't actually talk about him, but we did talk about third parties. So now that uh, Kim's ex, um, uh, Mr. College Dropout, is okay. saying officially that he's going to run and then has gone on one of the most anti-Semitic tirades in recent history that anyone has ever done. What? I mean, obviously he, he's not, he's not centrist. He's not going to win over the central population, mm. but he is rolling with a lot of like, and I'm not going to call them alt-right. I'm going to call them KKK because that's what they are, but yeah. he's running with like people like Nick Fuentes and people like that and going on info wars and saying crazy shit. So it makes you wonder like, one w w how do you stop someone like that like what what do you do to stop somebody from running when they're being that dangerous and crazy oh man i mean i don't think you can stop someone from running i think like the act of trying to stop them stop them stop giving them media attention like you know mm. everyone was like oh how did trump win it's like we gave him so much media attention True. Not his, like he took over fox completely but cnn would not stop running his face. I and we had, four, if you remember at the time, we had like thirty, or I swear, not even exaggerating, like thirty different candidates that yeah. we were waiting to see who was going to be from the DNC. And all, oh, out of those thirty candidates, it was Hillary Clinton. By the yeah. way, so like, yeah, we were kind of sick of it. Even some Democrats were probably in there, like, fuck you, and probably voted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were pissed. But like, seriously, um, I paid forty dollars to vote for Hillary Clinton. I had to, I wanted to mail in my ballot like really fast and and yeah. it because I have to do it from here. And so I paid $40 for that bitch. But <laughs> tell you, so, was, was I happy about it? No, I wasn't happy about it. Oh, man. But like but, you said, you need to vote for someone yeah. over the, the... Kanye West is going to steal from the conservatives. So I'm okay with it this time. Because if anybody votes for Kanye West, I, I would like to, first of all, isolate how many how much of the population is that stupid. So I can like right. use it to study the future of, my, of our existence. Of and facts. then... Yeah, I just want to see like how many people voted for Kanye West this election, just so yeah. we know what we're dealing with. And then, yeah, they're going to take it away from the conservatives because if anyone liberal is voting for Kanye West, then they obviously don't know what that. that what's that going on? Is. Yeah, yeah, they don't know. They don't know what liberal. Means. They don't know what's going on. Uh, man, Juliet, always a pleasure. You are one of my favorite people to follow on social media, so I would be more than happy. Can you please tell people where to find you on social media? Oh and, yeah, should uh, I change my name? Oh, it's it's at the Juliet Danger on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> at the Juliet Danger. I'm going to add it into the, the description oh. below. And uh, yeah, you, you also do stand-up comedy. Yeah. So yes, uh, I, I, this, I, I usually try and keep these evergreen so that people can rewatch them whenever. The idea for this, though, is that because you're always doing stand-up, I feel like people will always be able to check out your stuff. Yeah. So is there any shows recently, uh, any shows, upcoming shows that you're really excited about? And down the road, uh, where where's one of the places that you frequent the most so that people can pr try and check it out? Oh, okay. Well, coming up, I've got something up. Uh, it's Bishop and Bag, but it's Bishop and Gags. But also, I'm going to be in the uh, the Montreal Grand finale, the top top eight or top ten of or whatever right. or something comedians. So we're battling it out on the December 11th for the top prize, which is like a thousand dollars. So I'll be doing oh. that. 
yeah, probably won't win because there's some there's some so funny. I, some of the people are that are up are some of my favorite comedians like in Montreal right now. So I don't think I'm gonna win, but I'm very happy to be performing with them. Sunday. I respect that because there's some yeah. people that are are negative about situations like that, but your yeah. reaction is just like, oh, if I lose, it's only because these are people that I also admire. Oh my god, is- I mean, don't, I, I literally, I mean, comedy so up and down. Like one day I could be like, I'm the best ever, and then the other day I could say like, this was the worst moment of my life i was so unfunny why don't i just go become a doctor like seriously <laughs> i lose like all of it so it's it's like there's no way and for sure these people are like seasoned so if i won it would be like i'd have to be amazing but i don't think i'm i don't think i'm that good okay <laughs> Take i think you're amazing uh and you are always going to be your uh, your most harsh critic so i'll say it for you i i do i don't think you would have sure. gotten this far if you didn't have talent uh so obviously you're doing something well and I'll, yeah, you're making that face because you don't like compliments, and that's hurts, why I'm going to give you more compliments. Um, it hurts so painful. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, uh, we're going to sign off. Is there anything else you want to tell the people before we bounce? No, thank you so much for having me on. And, uh, no. Yeah, I love you. You're one of my favorite people too. Thank, and I need no, your honestly. updated address for um yeah 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 holiday cards. <laughs> uh, I'll I will be more than happy to share that holiday card on social media. Thank you so much, Juliet. Uh, I appreciate it, and I'll talk to you soon, everybody. Once again, we happen to live in the dumbest timeline, not the darkest one. And as 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 close to the darkest one as we can get, though, it's getting it's getting pretty bad sometimes. But we will pull ourselves away and more, march towards the light, and uh, hopefully that light is uh, more fun and more positive. That's it. That's all. That's another edition. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back soon. Peace, y'all. <laughs>